In early March, we were still at the end of flu season, and we were processing tons of upper respiratory illness, lots of people with cough, fever, shortness of breath. Uh, and I just remember thinking, how the heck am I gonna know that this is a COVID patient? Because I've never seen one, I don't know what it is. Um, none of us have ever seen one. There's no literature to tell us what's different about them or what they look like. I actually saw the very first COVID patient <laughs> for our hospital. Um, I remember, the story the gentleman gave, and um, thinking in my head, oh, he's got COVID-19. <laughs> and by, back then we were doing these uh, send out tests that had about a week or so turnaround time. It was just the, the uncertainty that was out there. And it, it was scary for a lot of people. It was scary for all of us. And opening the COVID units, it's been early mornings, long nights, trying to just make sure that the nurses and staff up on those units feel comfortable and are using machines and poppers and stuff that they didn't use on a daily basis um, or even ever. It's not fear anymore, it's certainly concern. The, I think, appropriate level of concern. Um, You've got to be respectful of this thing. So it's kind of like um, one of those old-fashioned jumper suits that you'd put your little kids in when they were little, and you zip it up, it goes all the way to your neck, it has a little hat, and um, the papper hat pretty much looks like, you know, an astronaut helmet, and you turn the motor on, it's got a hose that goes in, and it continuously blows cool air that goes out, that way nothing can come in, which that's what kept us safe. We've shown that by following our processes and our procedures and being smart, that we can protect ourselves. And I think that has uh, given people a level of confidence about what's going on. It doesn't matter the age, it doesn't matter the race, the gender, the pre-existing conditions, there is not a typical COVID patient. As I tell everybody, there were two sets of patients that were up there. Um, one set of patients pretty much um, didn't wake up for anything. The other set of patients, um, they would they would be awake, um, very very slow to response. It was it was like talking to somebody who had a massive stroke. It was like you could tell they were thinking, but it just didn't come to their lips. And um, nobody ate, nobody ate. And then you know clearly you know when people did start to come out of that state and then start to eat, we knew that they were on the road to recovery. You know, and then, you know, they were very, very thankful when they left. I mean, just, you know, hey, thanks for, you know, I'm, this has been so good, you know. Um, none of them really voiced that they were scared. I never, you know, in any of my interactions, did they ever say that they were scared. I'm aware of the precautions I need to take. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I more or less keep these precautions always with every patient. You know, the idea of an infectious disease coming through the emergency room, it's nothing new. That's, that's, uh, that's the name of the game for what we do on the front line. I'm hyper aware of it now, but not fearful per se. Everyone has come together to work as a team, and it's not who you are or what you do. It's every, everyone has truly come together for one purpose, and that's just patient care. No, nobody's under the impression that this, this uh, virus or this crisis is going away anytime soon, but we know what we can handle and we know how to treat patients effectively, and that's, that's very comforting.